What's up everybody, Prashant here. Welcome to my YouTube channel and thank you for joining me today. Over the last month, the S&P 500 is down 142 points, or roughly 3%. And the Dow is down 1400 points, or about 4%. A big downturn came just this week, when on Monday, September the 20th, this S&P 500 dropped 75 points, whereas the Dow dropped 600 points. Now, it's well known that September is on average the worst month for stocks, but this is somewhat special. In fact, I myself lost thousands of dollars. This has been the worst month for my portfolio since May. I lost money in my brokerage accounts and my retirement accounts. I lost money on index funds, on individual stocks and cryptos. Nothing was spared. In fact, I even did a poll on my Instagram and looks like most of the respondents also lost money in the market this week. Well, do you wanna know why? Of course you do, that's why you're here. Well, I'm going to tell you right after you smash the like button to turn the stock market frown upside down. For the last five days or so, I've been reading a lot of news about an impending potential housing crash, about a housing bubble, about a lot of debt that cannot be paid and that it's all about to come crashing down. Now, if you're thinking you've been magically transported back to 2007, let me assure you, you are still definitely in 2021. And I'm talking about yet another potential housing crash. Only this one is in China. That's right, the world's second biggest economy may be in a housing bubble, which may be about to pop. If you've seen any financial news over the last week or so, you've seen at least one news article about this, and you know of the company Evergrande. Or Evergrande? Let's say Evergrande. Over the last few weeks, Google searches for the company Evergrande have gone up exponentially. So what is Evergrande? Evergrande is the second biggest real estate developer in China. It was started in 1996, and while its main business today remains real estate, they have since diversified into a lot of different sectors, some which seem unrelated, like buying a soccer team. So before we go any further, we need to talk a little bit about the Chinese real estate market and how it differs from the real estate market here in the US. Currently, China is building housing at a much, much faster pace than the United States is. Typically here, when you go to buy a house or a condo or whatever, you will probably be buying a finished house. This will be a house that you can actually physically walk into to check out before you buy it. Now, sometimes you will be buying into a development where you will put a deposit down with the builder and then they will build the house for you. But that is pretty rare in the grand scheme of things here in the United States. In China, just like a lot of other countries in the world, people will actually go and put deposits with property developers ahead of time. And then the property developer will construct the houses that then the people can take possession of at a later date. Doesn't sound so crazy so far. Another thing to know is that people love buying real estate in China. In fact, it has some of the highest home ownership rates in the world. People also love buying second or third homes, basically to set their children up for success for the future. One other reason that people love buying real estate in China is for speculative purposes. Real estate prices have increased dramatically over the last few years, especially in the big cities like Beijing. So people will buy houses with the hope of flipping it a few years later for a neat profit. To top that, people don't generally like investing in stocks as much, so a majority of household wealth in China is tied up in real estate. Okay, now that we understand a little bit about the Chinese real estate market, let us go back to talking about the company Evergrande. Evergrande is a company that has been in rapid expansion mode. It takes the down payments from its consumers, raises extra cash as debt from the market, and uses that money to build houses and then sell them. And then it goes on and repeats this many, many times. In fact, it has leveraged itself to a very, very high degree and is currently carrying $300 billion in debt. That's 1.5 Jeff Bezos, wild. Before the end of September, the company is supposed to pay $120 million in just interest payments. It has warned its investors that it may not be able to meet all of its debt obligations. Two dates to watch will be September 23rd and September 29th, 2021, which are two dates when two large interest payments are due. We'll see what happens. So why is this happening? Well, it's somewhat hard to understand because of limited data available out there. But my basic understanding is that recently the Chinese government changed some rules about how much money a property developer could borrow. 
For a company that uses debt to pay its suppliers and contractors, you can see how this could be an issue. And if people start seeing that a property developer is having trouble finishing its ongoing projects, they're unlikely to put down payments on new yet to be built houses, thus drying up that income stream. In fact, Everglade has actually lowered prices on its new houses in an order to gain some more cash. Also, it has offered to pay its suppliers and subcontractors in houses instead of cash. All in all, a pretty difficult situation for any company to be. In fact, stock prices have dropped more than 90% in the last one year. All right, so now we know there's a large construction company in China that may be in trouble and may not be able to meet its debt obligations. So why are your stocks falling? Why is your money disappearing? Well, let's think about that for a minute. If a large company in construction such as this one goes under, it cannot pay its creditors or its banks on its loans. It cannot give houses to its 1.5 million customers who've already put deposits down. All the people working on their construction sites probably lose their jobs. And what happens if it defaults on its debts? Banks who have loaned this company money cannot get their money back. Yes, in theory, they could foreclose on the real estate. After all, the debt is probably backed up by all that real estate. They could foreclose on that. But what are they going to do with half-built houses? Sell it to another developer? Maybe, but at what price? Banks and other institutional investors will often take a bunch of different investments and bundle them together and sell them to everyday investors such as you and me. Now, I personally invest in the S&P 500, and as far as I know, I do not have any direct exposure to Evergrande. But remember, I invest in the S&P 500. There might be some company in that basket of 500 plus companies who have some direct or indirect exposure to Evergrande, which may end up hurting me. So far, just the uncertainty around Evergrande is causing some really difficult trading days here in the United States. What happens next may be based on several different factors. Will the company be able to meet its debt obligations? Will it be able to restructure or refinance its debt? Will the Chinese government bail this company out? We just don't know yet. Even cryptocurrencies are doing poorly this week. Why? One theory points to Tether. Tether is a stable coin with the aim of keeping the value of one Tether equal to one US dollar. It keeps its assets in commercial paper or commercial bonds. Now, even though Tether has publicly come out and said that they don't have any direct or indirect exposure to Evergrande, it does not actually publicly disclose all of its assets, which is creating uncertainty. And the one thing we know is that markets hate uncertainty. So let's talk about what I'm planning on doing with all of this uncertainty in the market. As usual, I'm going to keep my long-term investor hat on and I'm fully planning on writing this out. It's possible that Evergrande collapses and the US stock market escapes unscathed. It's also possible that Evergrande collapses and it does ding the US stock market and sends us into a correction of 10 to 15% amongst this and other economic pressures. In fact, a lot of analysts have been calling for a correction of 10 to 15% for quite a while now, and this might be the event that triggers such a correction. My plan is to try and buy the dip if I can. In fact, I bought some stock last week. I dollar cost average into the S&P 500 every month, and this is exactly what I did. I'm going to try and gather up some extra cash just in case there's another dip like we saw on Monday, and if there is one, I might go in and try to buy some more S&P 500. Right now, the S&P 500 is about 4.5% off its all-time high from early September, which means there is a long way to go if we are to see a potential downside correction of 10% to 15%, and I would like to take advantage of it. So that's all I have for you guys in today's video. I hope you found this video interesting and useful. And if you did, please go ahead and smash that like button and the subscribe button for the YouTube algorithm and click the bell icon to be notified instantly when I post a new video. I post at least one new video every week with great new financial content and I would love to see you back here on the channel. Go ahead and follow me on Instagram, TikTok and Twitter. Thank you for watching and see you next time.